What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, we are on the final video of this series covering the new Soulbound reward cards. I have covered all of the other elements so far, fire, water, earth, life and death in their separate videos or previous videos. So today we're actually going to combine both dragon and neutral. And uh, we will start with the dragon uh, because I want to cover the summoner first. Again, there's no neutral summoner, but there is a dragon rare summoner, which is Helios Matriarch. Now this is a six mana plus one speed, as well as the conscript ability. And for anybody new, the conscript ability allows you to use gladiator cards. So what I like right off the bat, again, speed is super important to the meta, so plus one speed is always going to come in handy. But the conscript ability for the dragon summoner allows you to play dragon while also potentially pulling in any uh, any gladiators from other, uh, sorry, any gladiators from all, all the other splinters or all the other elements. So I think it's going to be highly sought after for that alone, just because, you know, imagine being able to play uh, a bunch of dragons as well as Quora or something like that. Uh, so <laughs> it'd be, be kind of cool, right? Uh, so so right off the right off the get go, I'm a I'm a fan of that one. Now let's go over to the common cards. Actually, there are no common cards. Uh, let's go to playable, and we'll go to rare. Oh, I guess that's it. Okay, so epic. There is a now this is an interesting one for all of the epic cards out there. Uh, all the other epic cards. Uh, each splinter, including, I believe, neutral, has a an epic card that does not have an attack on it. So here, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name. Uh, good luck to you. <laughs> but for one mana, this is the cheapest out of all of the epic cards that we've seen so far. It's one mana, speed of one, uh, abil or hit points of three, but it does have the scavenge ability. Now, again, this makes, uh, this makes this card very, probably very popular, very useful in a lot of the... Um, in a lot of like the weapons training options that you have across the board. Again, its speed isn't fantastic, but it might be great for a reverse speed rule set at the higher levels. So, you know, max for max for bronze, you get that second, uh, you get that second speed max for silver. You get an additional health, but once you're in gold, uh, you sure you get an additional health, but you also get the silence ability. So now you get, uh, not just, not just, uh, you know, a scavenge card or one mana, one mana kind of like tank there. You also get someone that can give you, in, in my opinion, a, a solid uh, support because ma the magic meta can just get out of hand really, <laughs> really quickly. So being able to combine him with someone like Will of Wisp from the death team and all, all of a sudden now you're stacking minus two magic damage, right? Uh, and that could be devastating for a lot of teams, especially if you can throw in a, a tank that has void or void armor or something like that. Now, at the highest levels, you do get the camouflage ability. Uh, so again, he can be completely invisible in the back line and, and completely protected. So again, I, it's it's not a terrible card uh, for one mana. I think it's actually quite powerful. And in many ways, you'll be able to use it uh, specifically with all of the weapons training abilities that are out there. So I am a big, big fan of that. Now let's go over to the neutral. I'm just going to check on the bottom here. Yes. Okay. So we have two neutral common cards. We'll start there. So the first one you have is the Gobson Bomber. And at the lowest levels, this is an interesting one because of the fact that you get recharge as well as camouflage from the get-go. So he is somebody that you can hide in the back line for seven mana. It's, it's a little hefty in my opinion. You do get the recharge ability, which means you're doing seven mana and six damage every other turn. And in gold, or sorry, in, in bronze, you know, that speed of three is decent. Now, uh, well, we're, we're not going to get to gold just yet, but you do get an additional hit point as well as additional speed in, in bronze. Oh, sorry, in silver. But gold, you get the pierce ability. And now... That now this thing gets interesting because even at the first level of gold, which is level six, you're doing six damage but pierce. And then once you max him for gold, you're being you're able to do nine damage every other turn with pierce, and he's untouchable in the back line. Again, not not completely invincible, right? Can can uh, somebody can get him with a trample or whatever kind of rule set there? But you can you, you can try to find a way to hide him in the back line. So once he's in gold with that pierce, this thing gets really interesting for me because you can start to do serious damage and not have to worry about the armor. Um, and then at the highest levels, the fury. I mean. <laughs> This, this could be doing 18 damage per turn, guys. 18 freaking damage per turn. 
uh, against one of these taunt monsters, and I, I think he can wipe out a bunch of them. If you get if you're able to land that hit, there's not many taunt monsters that can take 18 damage. Um, so again, I, I think he gets really good in the gold and up uh, regions. Now, Dumaki Orc is an interesting tank here. Again, super susceptible to magic. You only have one health point. You do have three armor, and he does have this shield ability. But for six mana, he's kind of slow at the lower levels. Now, sure, you can get up to, uh, you, you get a couple more armor points at max for bronze. And again, makes him interesting. Uh, at the, at max for silver, though, you get an increased attack uh, and you get the retaliate ability, which makes me feel like he could be a good candidate for something like a super sneak or maybe an all melee uh, all melee type of, uh, a game. So six mana means that, you know, anybody attacking the back line will, any, anybody attacking the back line will, uh, again, have to deal with the shield. They have to work through the armor, but I, I'm immediately looking at him and being like, well, someone like deep lurker or Uraeus, if they knock, if they hit that poison first round, like he's done, right? He's always got one health the entire time. Now, where could this come, come in handy? Um, if you have like an equalizer rule set that could come in handy. Uh, and as you can see here, he's really meant to be an anti magic or anti anti sneak attack, because not only does he have retaliate, but in diamond plus you get the thorns ability as well. And so when, when fully maxed out six mana, four damage, two speed. So he's not going to be much of an offensive threat, uh, but that eight armor, one health, and then the shield retaliate as well as thorns make him a perfect kind of back tank. So very, very specific use cases, but can be good in those use cases. Okay. Uh, let's check if there's any rares. Yes, we have the Venari Muskrat and this one. Oh, this is another one that has the martyr ability at level one. So I'm really liking this because, you know, he's only got one health speed of two. He's not going to do much, but you can throw him in there as like an opportunity bait, essentially have him die and then, and then, uh, <laughs> You know, essentially buff up the monsters around him. So for three mana, you're almost offering him as a sacrificial lamb in many cases. Now at the, so max for bronze, you get that, that third speed, which is pretty good. Max for silver, you do get a couple of extra hit points. So now he's got some meat to him, but he's not really that much of an offensive threat. So, you know, I, again, I, I don't know how valuable that is. It max for gold or in gold, you do get the snare ability. So, you know, it might be a good, might be good for, any kind of earthquake rule set, or if you know you're going up against some dragons. Uh, and then at the highest levels, you get that second attack. So three mana, two damage, uh, as well as the shatter ability. So none of the other abilities really stick out to me, but I like that you get Martyr from the get-go and can really use him as some kind of opportunity or sneak bait. I mean, sneak isn't going to be perfect, but uh, opportunity... Well, actually, what's nice is you can place him as a sneak bait between someone, you know, a, another monster and then like a Dr. Blight that has camouflage, for example. So uh, I, I like this guy off the bat, hoping I get one right away and I can start martyring him, <laughs> martyring him from the get go. OK, epic cards. We have one epic card for this, uh, for the neutral um I guess neutral element as well. Now this one is interesting. Uh, keep in mind, there's epic cards without an attack across the board for all of the uh, splinters or all the elements. Four mana is great in the sense that I think there's only one other four mana card. I think the the Earth one was four mana as well. Four mana is great because you can play it in Little League, and you know we tend to get that one all the time. Now it's super slow, super weak from a hit point perspective, but it does have seven armor. And it gives everyone plus, uh, you know, plus one speed. So I can see it being an interesting. Um, I can see it being interesting for something like Grandmaster Wraith. But I'm immediately thinking to myself, would I use someone like Clockwork Aid over Pelicor, um, Pelicor Conjure, for example? Right, half the mana, you get a decent amount of hit points. You get Magic Reflect and Silver. Um, you get Phase in in, uh, in uh, what's that called? Diamond Plus. So I don't know that I would necessarily use it at the lower levels for that. Again, maxed for silver, you get more armor, still that one health, that one health throughout, uh, and still the swiftness ability. Now, at the higher level, so maxed for gold or in gold, you get rust, which could make him interesting if you know you're going to be up against some heavy armor teams. Um, and then at the highest levels, you get a strength and ability. So again, I don't know when and how I would use this over something like a Pelicor Conjurer, but... Um, you know, it's, it's not terrible. And I like the four mana. 
I'd like the four mana. If it was three mana, then all of a sudden we'd, we'd be having a different conversation because then it's like for one more mana, you get a bunch of other abilities here that I could potentially see myself replacing Pelic or Conjurer with. But again, for two mana, I, I don't know. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Now there might be other opportunities to use this. Obviously, if there's uh, there's games where it's weak magic, for example, and we get that some somewhat often too, um, and all of a sudden now he becomes you know somebody that has ten hit points and gives uh, a bunch of a bunch of uh, abilities or, or buffs and debuffs around. So again, it's a decent card. I like that it's four mana. Wish it was a little bit cheaper, but uh, we'll see. Okay, and then finally, probably. This might be my favorite card out of all of the legendaries. And the reason is because you get double strike as well as two attack types, right? So you get one ranged, two melee damage. Um, and again, this is a neutral card. So it is a giant. So Drybone, Drybone Raider is a, is a giant at 12 mana. But it reminds me of the Vigilator from the Untamed series. And uh, I loved playing with that card uh, way back just because... it. I mean, you it, used in the right rule sets, such as um, using the right rule sets, such as uh, you know, super sneak, equal opportunity, melee mayhem. You get four attacks, right? And in this case, you'll be doing I guess six damage at the lowest levels. Twelve mana is, is a hefty price to only do six damage, but you can pair him with. Uh, monsters that have the inspire ability, which I think could go a long way, right? And you can maybe even stack those in some instances. Now at the higher, in sorry, not the higher levels, but in silver, you get an additional, you get two buffs here, right? So you get an additional uh, attack. So now you're doing four damage per turn, right? Or eight damage uh, if, if it's in the right rule set. And then this is where I really like it, the cripple ability. Because imagine now you are attacking a monster that has... Um, taunt for example right yeah you're attacking a monster that has taunt and they are doing whatever they can to uh to, to heal it with triage or with tank heal or something well now you are crippling that four times you are reducing its health max health by four in a single turn with just this guy like he could be super powerful in many instances and then and then this is where things get outrageous right because once you get the shatter ability in gold if the opponent has armor you hit them, you're gonna, and you can have the chance to hit them twice or four times, right? Uh, again, specific rule sets. I, I'm always probably going to use it whenever there's like an opportunity to use it four times. You you shatter the armor after the first turn, which means the other three turns you're doing at least six damage that go straight into the hit points. And again, if you inspire him or you use someone like Selenia Sky, right? Whatever the case is, you you can do so much more right after that first hit. So I'm a big fan of this. Obviously, you get that third melee uh, at the highest levels, which again, now you're doing 10 damage potentially for 12 mana. He's not going to be the best card to use in all rule sets, but there are specific ones. Again, it reminds me of the Vigilator and how I used to how I used to use the Vigilator. And the fact that in those rule sets, you can kind of hide him in the back. Like he doesn't need to be your front tank, for example. And you can actually run like a taunt a monster if you wanted to. So I'm going to be really excited to see how this guy performs. Again, probably in silver or, you know, at level two. And then obviously level three, things things get out of control, in my opinion. So that is it, guys. We have covered all of the cards. Oh, no, I missed one, didn't I? <laughs> I totally missed the dragon legendary cards. Let's go back and do that. Wow. That would have been crazy. Um, all right, so we have the Dragon Legendary card, the final card that has the weapons training ability. Now, this is a giant. It also has, um, what's well, interesting, it doesn't have flying, but it's it's a giant and it has void armor. So it's an interesting card. It's an interesting card for it to have void armor because I don't know how much like magic attack you're taking in the back. Although, although it does offer a good kind of protection against uh, maybe snipe monsters that have the magic attack, right? And I'm immediately thinking of someone like a, someone like a, uh, what's his name? Oh gosh, I can't remember it now. He's the death guy. The death epic card. Boom. Magi Necrosi. All right. Brain fart there. So let's get back over to, uh, whoops, dragon. Barracks Snake Eye. So again, he, he could be he could be useful in that sense. Um, what I like with the weapons training ability is the fact that because it's ranged, in my opinion, the the ranged one is a little bit weak uh, or the weakest between all the abilities. But he does start off with three, meaning that you can do two and two if you pair him next to the appropriate people. Um, and then I like the oppress ability as well. 
Um, again, he's not my favorite overall. I'll be, I'll be honest. It, even at the higher levels, when you get true strike and that fourth damage, 10 mana is just a hefty price tag to pay. Maybe I'm not thinking about this right way. Maybe I'm not looking at it the right way. Sure. You could play him with someone like a Selenia sky to get that additional, uh, damage. But what is the main dragon card most people are playing with right now? It's quicks the devious. So if anything, he's going to get debuffed from the get go um for for a while so again not not my favorite legendary card uh i i definitely think i like the the neutral legendary much much more i think there's more use cases for it but overall not bad and again i'm sure there'll be instances where the the weapons training ability will come in very handy so that is it guys we are done finally with all of the splinters uh, or all of the elements uh that is all i have for you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below i hope you guys enjoyed the series i will catch you all in the next video and see you around the game take care